Hello booktube, it's Andrea here and I'm here with the second part of my March wrap up. In the first half of the month we wrapped up 13 books and in the second half it's 7. So in total I read 20 books in March which is about my average so that's pretty good. So let's get started on the rest of the books, the second half of my wrap up. So, um, the first one I finished in the second half of the month was Listening for Water and Other Stories by Sandra Woolman. This was sent to me by Matador for review, so I'll be reviewing that fairly shortly. And some of these are really short, so they're like flash fiction, they're like a page or two pages. And some of them are a bit longer. So like you've got one about a hitchhiker, and it's like about four pages long, three pages actually. Then you've got The Golden Gate, which tells the story of a girl committing suicide while people try and stop her and other people watch. Uh, then there's stories about um, pa, one called Pa's Chair, which is about, you know, the, basically it starts, when we were children, it was even bigger. It has a back shaped like a shield, padded arms sticking straight out, thick, squishy cushion for the seat. Below the base is solid iron, medieval, with a heavy corkscrew to change the height and a wheel knob to secure it, all looked into a solid X with casters on the feet like metal oranges. Its brown leather skin used to smell nicely of dogs. These days, wax is what I conjure. When we were children, it was Pa's working place. He sat behind his desk to talk to patients, leaning back in the chair's tilt to listen. Sometimes he twiddled right around to take a book off the shelf. Other times, when he needed a stethoscope to, or to look closer at a person, he would twirl exactly the quarter necessary to free his knees and stand up. My brother and I marvelled at his mastery. So it tells the story of the life of this chair and how it progressed through the family. So these are really lovely short stories. as a short story about mothering and children feeling better. Um, it's just a fantastic little section of books. It's only about 129, uh, it's 128 pages. So it's not a very long book and you will get through it quite quickly and I do recommend it. It's a lovely little book of short stories. Uh, the second book I finished uh, or read in the second half of the month was book two from the Terry Pratchett-a-thon, The Light Fantastic, which continues on from where The Colour of Magic left off and we find um, Rincewid fall falling off the edge of the disc. And now there is this great red star in the sky that the disc world and the turtle known as Greater Tuin is heading towards because head, cause something is there. Um, now they have pondered this for centuries and looked into the mind of Great Tartuin and have only deduced that um, the, the turtle is looking forward to something but they don't know what it is. And it's a beautiful story, it's a beautiful ending to the first two which was originally coined by Terry Pratchett to be a, um, a pastiche on fantasy fiction, um, you know, to hum humanise it and humorise it and eventually became a series of 42 books which is fantastic. So I read that one. I love this book. I love the whole series. I have favourites and I have ones I don't like as much, which obviously as we go through the year and I read them, I'll tell you that why I don't like them as much. But this one, because it's the second one in the series and it actually finishes off the story of um, The Colour of Magic, it's a great book. And in fact, when Sky Television made The Colour of Magic and The Light Fantastic into a series, it was done as one whole thing. There was that one. So um, just so that you know, listening for water, I gave it uh, four stars. The Light Fantastic, four stars. Uh, then I read, I finally finished The Empty Glass by J.I. Baker. Now this is a story about a deputy coroner who is involved with the circumstances surrounding the death of Marilyn Monroe. I have written a very lengthy review for my blog. It's not up yet but it will be fairly shortly and um, which explains why I, what I liked and disliked about this book and why I find this very... It took me a long time to read because of the subject matter. Um, because I know 
a lot more about the circumstances of Marilyn Monroe's death and the people who were involved in her life at the time than the author that does. There's a lot in it that jarred with me. I'm not going to go into. If you do want me to do a full review of this book, let me know in the comments below. And I will explain, as I did in my written one, which I will be posting fairly shortly, what it was that really jarred. And there, it's not just about Marilyn. There is a piece in here where he talks about the death of a, a gangster named Johnny Stompanado, who was living with Lana Turner and was her boyfriend and lover at the time. And he was killed by, allegedly, by Cheryl Crane, who was Lana Turner's daughter. And in this book, he says he that Cheryl Crane shot him, but she didn't, she stabbed him to death. So that jarred on me for the start. And then I thought, well, actually that would make a really good fictional story, fictionalize the story of that, but why? Why, why wouldn't you do that? Why would you pick on this person and not the other person? Why? Because Marilyn sells and that is the only reason. Marilyn will sell and sell and sell and sell and continue to sell. This book will probably would sell more copies than a book about Johnny Stompanado and Lana Turner and it's a simple, this, all it is is money. However, I did enjoy the writing style so I gave it three out of five stars because actually I think he's a very good writer and I would like to see him do something that doesn't slander Marilyn and the Kennedys again. Also didn't much get the ending because in the ending the guy who's a deputy coroner turns up is, is dead and nobody recognizes him in the coroner's office. He's a John Doe. How would that be possibly possible? If he worked for the coroner's office somebody would recognize him when he turned up dead. Really? Come on. So that really jarred. Obviously, as you can tell, was not happy with that. Then, an ebook. So I will put the picture up here. This was a book that I got from NetGalley in exchange for an honest and fair review. I haven't written it yet. It's not up yet. And it's called The House and it's by Simon Lelick. And this tells the story of this couple who buy a house and the, the girl, Sydney, is tormented by her past because her father tortured her. She had a sister who he adored but her he picked on and picked on and picked on until she ran away and then her younger sister killed herself because the father turned on her instead. So she's feel, felt guilty about that for years but she also knows at some point her father's going to get out of prison and even she knows he's going to come after her. There's a little girl who lives opposite who also is being tortured by her father. So she feels a kinship with this child and this tells the story and they own this house and it starts off like it's going to be some sort of freaky ghost story but it's not. It's worse. The child's, the girl's, the young girl, the child's father turns up dead and it's who killed him and uh, it's quite a good mystery actually. It's really, really, it's interesting written because it's written like, a, the first part of it is written like a diary so you've got a bit from his point of view. Simon's, I think his name was Simon's point of view. No, that's, that's the name of the writer in it. So, so it cut Jack. Jack's point of view and then you so he writes a bit and then there's a bit from Sydney's point of view so it's very disjointed to start with but it works amazingly well um it was it was so hard to get into that that I gave it three out of five stars but it was a really good story and I really enjoyed it in the end next a book that's been on my TBR shelf for a very long time a bit like the uh, empty glass and that's Home by Harlan Coburn I am a big Harlan Coben fan. I loved his TV series The Five when that was on last year. So I've been picking up Harlan Coben either in cheap hardbacks, this one was 50p, or in paperback where I can so I can read them. This tells the story of two boys that disappear one day um, and then some, they're age six, and then ten years later one is found uh, roaming the streets of London and there's a lot more to this that meets the eye. I'm not going to go into it and spoil it. It's a really good story. Really enjoyed it. You do get an idea of what has happened towards the end of the story but, but then it's the way it's being revealed so that you know certain things have happened certain, and then other things have happened but it is a really good book and there's a bit of an interesting twist at the end which I quite enjoyed. It's Harlan Coben at his best. I gave it four out of five. I haven't actually given, I only gave one book five out of five this month and that was in the first half and that was A Grave Calling by Wendy Roberts which I can't talk about. Then I read one of the James Patterson bookshops which was Taking the Titanic. Um, that did come from the library but it's gone back so I will put a picture here. Now these books are like 160 pages long each. They're very very short snappy crime stories and tells the story of Celia and John Bowen who board the Titanic. They're a pair of master thieves who are going to rob the rich. However, so obviously 
you can't, we all know what happened to the Titanic, but so something happens during that time that when the ship goes down and they're all right, they decide to change their ways and the end of the Titanic sinking is the beginning of a new life of, in America, of being, of going straight, basically. They're not going to, to be what they were before. But the story of how they got to that point is very, very fascinating and includes the um, some swindles and some gambling and some arguments and a, the kidnapping of a child. It's absolutely very cleverly done and very, very quick read. So for a quick read, it's worth reading. And number 20 and finally is a very old book from 1920s and that was The Red Lacquer Case by Patricia Wentworth. So Patricia Wentworth wrote crime novels around the same time as Agatha Christie, not as well known. Um, but I really enjoyed the book and um, The Red Lacquer Case tells the story of this girl named Sally, I think, yes Sally, and her uncle Fritzel as she calls him. He has come from Switzerland or the continent and he's um, invented a formula that could uh, kill people so all the governments want it for war purposes. He has purposes? Purposes. He wants to give it to the British public. British um, government because he knows that they'll look after it properly um, but, but it's weighing heavily on his hands so he puts it in a red lacquer cigarette case which has secret catches shows Sally how the catches work and then he disappears leaving her with the case and it, up to her to do what she wants with it but all is not as it seems because the lacquer case is stolen and then Sally is kidnapped by the bad guys who want her to open the case and she refused she's stoic and she does it and on the scene comes Major Bill Armitage who was her boyfriend from way back um, but she wasn't interested because she was big in suffrage at that point and you know trying to get women to vote which was great um, so she turned down his offer of marriage and so on and they went their separate ways now they come back together they realize they still love each other oh um she gets kidnapped obviously and he um is trying to find her now he doesn't have to come to her rescue because she's can look after herself she's quite a quite a, uh, a, a you know quite a modern girl really because she can she escapes from the baddies two or three times she gets recaptured obviously but in the end between them they manage to sort out the problem catch the bad guys and the, go get together and live happily ever after as those stories go and I think I gave that I don't know how many did I get three or four three or four something like three or four I'm not actually sure I'm just gonna have a quick look I gave it three um it was really funny I've got a few more of those Patricia Wentworth ones I have them on ebook so I'll put a cover here uh that I downloaded from Amazon they usually run 99p or free uh, so I just pick them up as and when I find one um, so yeah, those were the other seven books that I read in March and I'm already reading well for April. I am looking forward to having another great month of reading and buying books and doing book tags, doing book hauls, doing reviews and just generally lots of bookish things as I know you all are. I love you booktube and I will see you soon.